Good evening, folks, and a very, very warm welcome to you wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us on Dinamore TV, the official podcast of the St. Albans Dinamore Football Club. Folks, it is episode five, and my name is Taunchy Pulsatz. I am your host for tonight. I'm really looking forward to tonight's show. It is going to be a jam-packed show, let me tell you this. And um, I tell you what, we've got some uh, some new innovations this week. We've got a Player of the Week award that is going to be handed down each week to the best player for the Dynamo uh, senior team in the NPL Victoria competition, as judged by the coaching staff and the management staff of the uh, seniors. We've also got a new segment called the Meet the Team segment, and each week we'll be looking at a junior team from within our club, and we'll put the spotlight on them. Tonight, it's all about the under-14 boys junior NPL team. They will be the ones that will be taking centre stage. We've got some exclusive behind-the-scenes footage of the boys at training and um, and also a very, very special message to all of you who are tuning in to Dynamo TV. We've got a recap of the weekend's round of matches, both in the junior NPL boys competition and also it was the season opener for the uh, senior men's and the under-23s. We'll find out all about how they went on the weekend, and we've also got some uh, footage of that as well. And um, we're also going to have a very, very two special guests tonight. The player of the week will be joining us, so we'll be announcing very shortly, folks, who the the inaugural winner of the Dynamo Player of the Week Award is. And we'll also be speaking to the coach of the boys' uh, under-14 junior NPL team, Sonny Pegorin. Um, he'll be joining us as well as part of that Meet the Team Club or Team Focus. Uh, folks, don't go away. We're going to be back very, very shortly with tonight's news desk. And like I said, there's a lot happening. And by the way, this Sunday, all roads lead to Churchill Reserve because it's the first home game of the season for the senior men's NPL team. And also, the junior NPL boys will all be at home as well. So it's going to be a big action-packed weekend coming up. Don't go away. The IND Group is regarded as one of the largest deliverers of concrete structure solutions in Victoria. Formed in 1994 by Ivan and Kathy Filipovic, their passion and commitment to getting the job done safely and economically has underpinned their success in the industry. IND partners with large-scale building and construction companies in both the private and public sectors on projects large and small. With our corporate headquarters based in South Melbourne and Storage Yard based in the southeast suburbs, we have at our disposal thousands of square metres of quality materials along with state-of-the-art lifting and crane equipment, enabling us to deliver the largest projects. We are committed to delivering high quality projects by partnering with our clients and collaborating with project suppliers to ensure each job is delivered to exceed expectations. From humble beginnings, IMD now employs more than 1,200 dedicated professional and support staff, involved in a number of landmark projects right across Victoria. The IMD Group is a massive supporter of the Croatian community backed soccer clubs in Victoria and is proud to be the major sponsor of the St Albans Dynamo Football Club in 2024. Welcome back. It's the News Desk, and we've got a new jingle as well. It's all happening here at Dinamore TV, folks, and we're only five episodes in. So big cheerio to everyone who is tuning in tonight. In the comments section, pop it down. Where are you tuning in from? We'd love to hear some something from the interstate viewers or maybe international viewers. Um, but indeed, whichever part of Melbourne or Victoria, indeed, you're listening to, Pop it down in the chat section. We might even uh, make you famous and read out your uh, read out your comment. But uh, let's turn our attention first of all to round one of the uh, J, uh, the the NPL competition this week. Um, and if we turn our attention straight away, um, that is uh, the scoreline: nil nil against the Port Melbourne Sharks last Saturday night at SS Anderson Oval. And uh, that's how the uh, team first started. 
the starting lineup. But let's now go to the highlights. Um, and we've also got some of the post-match comments as well. And as we can see, that was the starting lineup. We had Keranovic, Dib, Gerez, Summerskill, Monek, Razumic, Cholina, Captain Grgic, Divin, King, and Rico Bene in the starting lineup. The first half didn't really show much for either side. It was a very, a very even sort of an affair. Uh, there weren't too many shots and goal from either end. Uh, there was one of the rare ones from Dinamo, Brian Summerskill, there in the 38th minute. We did manage to get a lot of corners on the board, that's for sure. Uh, four corners in total. In the second half, we had a couple of opportunities, and he's one of them. Nice goal kick clearance from Keranovic. Once again, on the counter-attack, St. Albans. This is their route to goal. The ball in by Alan Jerez. And it was a good run through the lines. Brian Summerskill making that run beyond the striker. Timing it very well. The ball didn't make it to his outstretched feet to trouble Ilya. Even at that stage, Port Melbourne Sharks had doubled the shots on target to Dynamo. And in the last 15 or so minutes, the Sharks were just ruthless, uh, constantly um, attacking Dynamo's goals. But the Dynamo defence stood resolute. And it was a fantastic performance by Yashko Keranovic, the goalkeeper, who, fair income, saved us on several occasions. But it was a very disciplined, very controlled performance by the Dinamo defence. The midfield came back and helped on many occasions. And in the end, Dinamo was able to hold out for a nil-all draw. And the first points of the season, uh, a draw on the road. As we can see, stoppage time now. Port Melbourne peppering the goals, but thankfully to no avail. The under-23s also did well. They drew 2-2 in their game immediately after this performance. And there was still time for one last attempt to score that all-elusive all goal by Port Melbourne Sharks. But once again, the Dynamo defence stood firm and very resolute and they didn't let anything get past them on the day. Big shout out to Steve Curtin, who was uh, one of the co-commentators co on the night, who's one of my uh, co-hosts on the Football Out West show. And there we go, full-time Port Melbourne nil, um, St Albans nil. To be honest, I'm probably happy with the point. Um, it's a game that we um, identified as a game that we could come and try and get three points and it was a game we were definitely coming for three points to try and win um, but in the end I think they probably first half it was pretty even second half I think they just maybe just shaded it so yeah we'll take a point we, we showed a lot of resilience in that second half and we, um, we battled right till the, the end of the game so yeah I'm happy with I'm happy with the point um, a few players missing today um, yeah, there was um, Scott Bacall's international clearance never came through and Zelfie had an injury um, at work, I think it was. Um, yep. Yeah, so that was a bit disappointing. It kind of, But the other things you've got to deal with as a manager, you've got to deal with them and you've got to be uh, versatile to cope. And we've got a, a good, strong squad that we've got players ready to come in. And um, yeah, I've got no problem with that. Obviously, Scott's a quality player for us and big player, but yeah, we've got strength and depth this year, which is uh, pleasing. Next week, the yep. uh, Avondale, how do you yeah. think we'll go? Well, that's, it's like, there's no surprises, Avondale are a good side. They um, like to keep the ball, they move the ball, they've got pace in wide areas, so there's, there's no real surprises there. We know what we've got to get. Um, I've watched them a couple of times, so yeah, we just got to make sure we're up for the task. We show the resilience that we showed today and we can, we can get something out of the game. Oh, busy game, I thought I did all right, I guess. Um, I would say I did a bit too much, but no, nah, we got there in the end. Uh, it was a tough game. Um, not the result I'd say we wanted, but uh, we'll take the draw. Yeah, no, pressure, pressure was definitely on, yeah. So you pulled yeah. off a couple of good saves, which was awesome. So uh, so, so well done, yeah. Um, you know, pulled away. It's a, it, it, it's, a, it's a tough gig, yeah. Yeah, oh, for sure. Even the weather was, was a killer for the boys. Um, everyone was battling it out. You could tell the last 15 minutes. The, the tiredness were coming in. Yeah. 
Great, great game. Well, well done. Yeah, great game. Um, next week. It's, every game is tough. A tough one, yeah. But Avondale is a big one. It. Yep. Everyone's up for it. Um, it's not a game we're not up for. It's it's something we should win as well. Um, we all look positive, and it's a it's a definite better improvement from last year. Awesome. Better squad. Awesome. Well done, Yashko. Thank you, mate. There we go. The 19 shots um, in total to the uh, for, for the Sharks, as opposed to the Dinamo's five. Eight shots on target to just three for Dinamo. But we um, had nine corners. They had 10. We also had six offsides and they had one. So there are the post-match statistics. If we take a look at the ladder now, after round one, um, and if we go through some of the score, or we'll go through all the scores, South Melbourne defeated the Melbourne Knights just by one goal to nil um, on uh, Thursday night at Lakeside Stadium. So good performance there by um, our sister club. Green Gully one against Moreland City nil. Oakley Cannons three, um, defeating the newly promoted Manningham United Blues nil. On Saturday, Avondale defeated Dandenong City four goals to three but it was a great comeback by our other sister club, Dandenong City, the newly promoted Dandy, Dandy City. Uh, they scored two late goals to almost give um, uh, to give Avondale a bit of a heart attack, but uh, they've certainly softened them up in, in time for this um, weekend's clash when we host them at Churchill Reserve. Coltona Magic went down to Heidelberg United 1-0 at Paisley Park. And last but certainly but not least, at George Andrews Reserve, Dandenong Thunder also went down um, to the away team, Hume City, two goals to one. So Dinamo at the moment in seventh position, just outside the uh, the uh, so-called uh, top six, if you like. If that's uh, that's right. Um, then we're going to look at uh, next week's or this weekend's fixture. There it is. Dinamo hosting the reigning champions um, on Sunday at Churchill Reserve. Kickoff times are the under twenty threes at twelve thirty, followed by the seniors at 3 p.m. Now, a document was released during the week um, on um, on social media and it, it, it explained the promotion relegation rules for this year. In fact, uh, Football Victoria came out with this just, just prior to the kickoff of the new NPL season. But the interesting one, I guess there is a 10.11.2 um, paragraph C, the club finishing in the bottom position on the ladder at the end of the NPL men's senior regular season, not including the national second division clubs, that is uh, Avondale and South Melbourne at this stage, may be relegated. So at the moment, according to that document, it says that only one club will be relegated at the completion of the 2024 season. Uh, if we look at, look at the under-23s ladder, Dinamo drew 1-1. Uh, Did I say 2-2? Two, two? They drew 1-1 one, one, um, against Port Melbourne. So there's uh, about eight teams there all on one point at the moment in the under-23s. So uh, well done to the uh, 23s. They did very, very well in on that occasion. Um, we're going to... What else? Oh, Churchill Reserve is undergoing a little bit of a make-up, make, make up, if you like, in time for this coming Sunday game. So club officials were working overtime uh, last night, getting the ground in um, readiness, putting up the sponsorship boards, new sponsorship um, signings, and absolutely Churchill Reserve looks an absolute treat at the moment. And um, all is in readiness for what should be a massive, massive game um, on Saturday, or series of games, as we said. The junior um, NB, NPL are also going to be playing on Sunday. So if we go through uh, the results and the, the uh, results, first of all, of all the uh, junior NPL games, the boys' junior NPL games played over the weekend, three out of four, ain't bad. Um, the boys travelled up to Ballarat uh, City to the regional, the, the fantastic regional football facility there. It was uh, stinking hot, but they came back with uh, three wins and one loss. The uh, 14s, goals by Amin Elias, James Tabarkas, and Christian Pete, a 3-2 win over Ballarat City. The under-15s recorded a convincing 5-2 win over their counterparts. Uh, Maxim Mikulic, Marko Mioc, Rhys Basanko too, and Dylan Basanko getting the um, amongst the goal scorers. The under-16s, a 2-0 win courtesy of, of goals by Stephen Reicher and Max Wojtek. And unfortunately, the under-18s couldn't make it a clean sweep. 
Uh, they did win last week, and they were the only team to win last week. And this week, they were the only team to lose. So um, Thomas Smolka scored for the under-18s. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get a clean sweep, maybe this weekend. There are the ladders for the under-14s and the under-15s. At the moment, both those teams, if the, the competition standings stayed like this until the end of the gradings, would find themselves in Division 2. And then the 16s and the 18s there. Uh, the 16s currently in 7th position. The 18s currently in 5th position. Um, the other night, on Wednesday night also, there was, was a Mini Roos coaches meeting, or Mini Roos meeting, I should say, um, it was attended by a lot, not just the coaches, uh, parents and interested um, uh, persons there and full house there, as you can see, um, lots of very important inf information was 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 um, disseminated to everyone. And it is great to see that all elements of the club are at the moment really, really, um, well, very active. Um, and that is great to see. So uh, that's uh, fantastic to see. Folks, we're going to take a very, very short break. When we return, we're going to have a, uh, a premiere of our new segment called Meet the Team. And as we said, this week's team is the under-14 boys junior NPL team. Following that, we'll be speaking to their coach, Sonny Pagorin, and uh, he'll be telling us all about that win on the weekend up in Ballarat. Folks, don't go away. You are tuning into Dinamo TV. Okay, here we have our, one of our under-14 superstars, Lucas Burke. Lucas, tell us, what do you like most at St Albans Dynamo Football Club? The people, they're very nice. Yeah, and who's the biggest practical joker in the under-14s team, you think? Harvey. Harvey Turk. And also, what about training? Do you love training or do you just love turning up on a Sunday and having a game? I love both. They're really good because you get to play and you get to be with your mates. Very good. How do you think we'll go this year in the under 14s, first year in the NPL? I think we'll, I reckon we'll go good. Um, we've got a good team. Let's just hope we can do well. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Lucas. There you go. That was uh, Dinamo TV's uh, encore production of the um, Meet the Team, the under-14 boys junior NPL team. And a big shout-out to the producer and the cameraman, Mr. Ante Smolich, who did all the behind-the-scenes work. And it is my absolute pleasure now to welcome to Dinamo TV none other than their coach, Sonny Pegorin. Sonny, welcome to Dinamo TV. How are you? Thank you. Yeah, good. Thanks for having me. 
Yeah, um, great win on the weekend. Um, fantastic result after uh, after a bit of a hiccup in in round one. But uh, um, tell us about um, the weekend just gone by up in Ballarat. Very very hot conditions. Yeah, it was very hot. Um, kids, the kids did well. Um, it was two tail two halves as always, and we knew that was going to happen. So and going up to Ballarat is probably a hard task for the for the East Fourteens anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a new experience here yeah, going to Ballarat. So look, they fought hard and um, got the three three points. So I'm really happy with it. Oh, well done. Uh, that was a, a great performance. And the, you must be very proud of the boys there. Um, it, it's a very professional production. Well done, Mr. Smallich there. Um, but uh, it, it's it's just part of, I guess, what we're trying to do here at Dinner More TV and the club is give is give everyone that bit of publicity and to uh, to really, you know, put them in the spotlight and just say this is some of the great work that's being done behind the scenes. Now, speaking behind the, of behind the scenes, it's not just you, obviously, involved there. You've got assistant coaches and team managers and parents that help out. Who are, who's who's part of your 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 little team there at the under fourteens? Well as you said, we've got we've got Smolik as our team manager. We've also got Ian Burke as our assistant, but he's also our twenty threes assistant. So he gives us a hand pretty much all week. And look, the parents all put in, you know, that's the good thing about being at Dinamo. You know, the um the families always help out, you know, it's a, it's a great club to actually coach you know, to coach. So mm. I'm really privileged. Yeah. If we ever have, have a look at the ladder there, the under-14s ladder at the moment in sixth position, um, you come up against Avondale this uh, – I'm sorry, uh, not Avondale, it's George Cross this weekend, and um, they've had one draw and one loss. Do we know much about George Cross at all? Yeah, look, we played him in the uh, Diamond Cup uh, about three weeks ago, so we drew nil-nil. Um, it was a good game, it's, uh, like pretty much like Ballarat, two uh, two halves. Uh, we drew nil nil, but I think we were missing a couple of players that day, and we didn't have our goalkeeper either, so it made it a bit bit hard. But look, we're up for the challenge. We've uh, we've trained hard this week, so we've implemented a couple of things that we want to do on on the weekend. So I hope we um, we get the points. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the fixtures for this weekend. Uh, under fourteens get the ball rolling at nine thirty against uh, George Cross. Then the under fifteens at eleven ten. The under sixteens at one o'clock, and the under eighteens kicking off at three p.m. And um, that's the, all. Those games are on pitch three, I believe. What a what a fantastic surface pitch three is at the moment. It is just absolutely unbelievable. And um, Hopefully they won't be too distracted by looking at, particularly to the older boys, when they're looking at the seniors in the under twenty threes in action on pitch one. But, uh, um, mate, let's first of all talk about you. Let's let's talk about the Asani uh, Pagoran story. Where did you start playing football? And um, you've got an interesting story to tell about your coaching as well. Yeah, look, um, yeah, I've played for pretty much most of my life. So going from a couple of state league clubs, so. Uh, you know, Moreland City, Bangalore City, a lot of the English clubs, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so they, they're pretty much like Dinamo. They, they've got a good uh, tradition, yeah. They like, you know, having that kind of banter and uh, all that family kind of stuff. So being at Dinamo has been pretty much being like when I was playing there at Moreland and Banyol. So yeah. they've pretty much welcomed me with open arms. Yeah. What, 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 is, what is your background? Is it Pagoran? Is that how you say it, Pagoran? Uh, it's uh, it's Pegorin. It's, it's an Italian. Yeah, Italian. Italian. Yeah, no... I'm on the Croatian border. My parents, oh, well, my dad lives pretty much north. You can see the, you can see Croatia from where I am anyway. So you'll probably, yes. probably call me half Croatian. If you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's it's fantastic actually. Since we've started the program, we've had um, a couple of Italians, we've had a Maltese, we've had a, a, a Greek, we've got we've got all sorts of nationalities on. So it's 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 great to see. But uh, um, mate, um, and then look. When did, when did the playing career finish and, and when did you kind of decide you wanted to be? Um... Look, I, I had a couple of bad injuries getting later on in my life. It might have been about 35, I think, and I thought my body was gone. So they said, do you want to coach? And I said, oh, yeah, well, <laughs> I think that's where my transition went into. So kind of went, okay, I think they might be pushing me going, I think you need to coach now. I think I think you've um, your body's gone. So probably now I need to transition and now start to develop kids so yeah so it would have been about 35 36 yeah yeah, so. yeah. and um and did you did you transition into junior coaching or assistant senior coaching or or did you, we thrown in at the deep end with the uh, seniors yeah no i started i started at uh at Moreland city in uh 2009 mm -hmm. 2009 as their reserve 
reserve coach. So I did that for all three years, where won two titles. So it was pretty good. Um, good a bunch of kids. So we had a young young team that half of those guys actually ended up playing senior football down the track. So it was good. And it's, and it's, and it's for me as a coach, that's mm-hmm. what you want junior or senior football you want to see those kids develop and and move and play into a a role of the senior you know senior football yeah and having having that kind of i guess that that um uh, experience or, or, or coaching younger kids and watching them develop mm-hmm. and you talk to a lot of coaches and they say that's 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 probably the most fulfilling element of it is when they they can take a young player mold him into something and that they can sort of look back and say, look, they had a little bit of a hand in in shaping them and they've gone on to bigger and better things than what you're not. But is is that what sort of whetted your appetite to to sort of coach juniors or start coaching juniors? Yeah, well, that was always my philosophy anyway. You know, doing a C license or a B license, they always ask you what your philosophy is. Mm-hmm. So my philosophy is developing kids. And I get the bit, I ask my kids in my group, this 14s group, where do you want to be in five years' time? Yep. You know what I mean? And I, they asked me that same question and go, uh, what's your what's your things that you like? And I said, look, I like going to see a senior game where I've seen three or four of these kids that I've coached play senior football. That gives me the benefit that, that I'm actually doing something, you know, right for the game itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, in 2014, the uh, NPL program started. So it's amazing. It's now 10 years now here in Victoria. <laughs> That the NPL program has started. There have been so many changes, both at senior level and at junior level. But you've been there from the start, um, yeah. Sonny. You've you've coached s- since the inception of the NPL in Victoria. Yeah. yeah look, um, I started at Bulleen, uh, two years at Bulleen. Mm-hmm. Um, did the eighteens and the fifteens there. Helped out the fifteens as well. Um, and then ended up going from there to back to my old stomping ground at Moreland City for a couple of years. Uh, for two or three years and did the 15s, 16s and 18s there. So I pretty much took the team for three years. And then from there, went up to uh, Woodlesey Rangers for probably four mm-hmm. and did pretty much the same thing, went 15s, 16s, and then COVID hit. And we had that kind of that year where everybody went back to 17s as well. So we did a year of the 17s and then 18s and then went to Pasco Vale last year. And then I'm here. Uh, there you so, go. It's um it's been a good it's it's changed over the last ten years like going from just you know playing 20, 20 rounds to now having a pre qualification and doing this and I, I think it's a, a benefit for for these kids to see how it's molded in the last ten years so doing this and getting something out of it at the end of the year is a good thing so you know it develops them as 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 players and as as uh, human beings as well yeah. Yeah, we're speaking with Sonny Pagoring, the um, St Albans uh, Junior Boys NPL under-14s coach. Um, that's an interesting point, that last one, about how it's evolved, particularly the junior program. Um, you, you, you vote, you've, I mean, you, what, what does Football Victoria say? You need to have a 40-week commitment thereabouts. So I suppose when you throw in pre-season um, of at least six to eight weeks and what you're not, maybe even longer, plus the 33-round season, you're you're almost almost nine months of the year um, coaching or you're a parent or you're a player. Um, as a coach, and you've, all, you've already gone through this, I guess, one, once like through last year, is it is it too much? Is it not enough? Um, how much, how consuming is it on you as a coach, as a person? It is consuming. It is, but look, I love the game. So look, it's it's for me. It's a um, it's away from work. So it kind of gives me something else. It, it gives me something to look at after work and to actually, you know, mellow out and do something that I enjoy. Yeah. So that's that's a good thing. With the forty weeks, look, you know, when I played, it was only a six months a year game. You know, now it's evolved and it's moved to a full time gig where kids now need to now make a decision, are you going to play soccer yes. or are you going to play another sport? So most mm-hmm. of the kids in the last probably since inception have now started to say we've now got to emphasise with playing one sport yeah. and, and not playing three sports. So, um, And most of these kids now are starting going, yeah, I've got to make a commitment of a 40-week you know, year. And what do you sports. find? Do you find the majority of the kids you know, opt for soccer or do you know, sort of half-half, a lot of them drop off? Uh, what have you found in your own experience? Look, 
with the younger groups like the 14s, 15s, they, they they're eager. They're always there every week. Want to, they want to they want to get the ball. You've seen you've seen in the promo that we had. They they like to play and they like to have a bit of fun. Yeah. It's when they I think it's as soon as they start to get older, it starts to change and demographic changes as well. So yeah, it's just trying to keep them eager and making sure they still want to play. That's the biggest thing as a coach, trying to keep them. Yeah, aligned to play the game. Yeah, and that's the hardest. Then, yeah. if you keep them in, intrigued and engaged, you'll, you'll have them until they play senior football. Your job's easy, I guess. You don't. If, I suppose you know coaches like Mickey Pete, who's got the under 18s He's got seventeen year olds who are now hormone driven, and uh, they, they've probably discovered the girls. They've discovered the bar and the boys. You know, that's always a, a big hard, distraction. Man. So, <laughs> at yeah. this level, I guess it's not so much, not so bad, but uh, nonetheless, nonetheless. Um, this year, obviously, this is another thing. Last year, this this team, this crop of t- uh, players, predominantly played in the under fourteen competition, the under fourteen community league. Now they're very young, and you told me off air earlier today that a lot of the kids are still, you know, there's about half a dozen that can still play under fourteen MPL next year. Um, so obviously, a lot of them have have gone on and played the eleven v eleven format one year in advance. How do you find that that experience? Has that benefited these boys um, thinking more in the eleven v eleven as opposed to the nine v nine format? Look, I think it's I think it's been good for them. It's, it's look, I did a fourteen group last year, and it, it took a while for them to get going. So this year, they've actually they're a bit a bit ahead of where I expected them to be when I took it over in November. So, and like you said, we've got seven kids that are two thousand and nine babies, so they can play again next year if they want. So. The club have given me a direction that we want to develop kids. Yep. So I'm happy for young kids to be playing and get that experience. So if, if they do play 15s next year, fair enough. If they don't, we can play them 14s again yep. and they've got that experience of playing a big pitch. And then going back to what you said with the community, with those kids that have played community, it's been good for them because when you play going from a mini ruse 9v9 on a half pitch, it gets it's very hard to transition sometimes. So the club's done a really good thing with this community-based 14 team that we I've picked up, or half of them, to play NPL. So it's kind of the transition hasn't been as hard. Yeah. Well, if there's anyone that's tuning in that is from another club, this is why having your kids either come to Dinamo or you come to Dinamo is one of the, <laughs> the most um, 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 positive things that you could probably do. Sonny, I think you've just... Uh, done the best promo for why um, someone should be playing uh, under 14s at Dinamo uh, because of that philosophy. I mean, that's great to see the opportunities that are being given and offered to uh, to kids at Dinamo. But uh, um, how do you, how do you see this season panning out? Um, what what realistically what are your kind of aims? Do you want to finish in the top three, i.e. Division One or the Division Two? Or like last year, I think Dinamo finished in Division Three of the under 14 comp. Yeah, look, I coached against them last year, so they did. But they ended up winning it. So it yep. was a good thing for, for Mark as a 15s coach yeah, to actually get something out of it. And um, look, going back that way, we, we've had some goals. We've we set some goals and, you know, we're all um, halfway through the pre-qualifications, we'll know where we are. But we, we do want to play definitely Division 2. Um, like the first round we played, we played Brimbank and they'll be a Division 1 team. So... You know, and as you said, we did have a um, we had a loss, but look, there was a couple other factors in that. But look, we're looking at Division Two. It's a minimum. Yep. If we get Division One, we'll be we'll be great. We'll be privileged to do that as well. Yeah. If we if we do take a look a lot, um, look at uh, like that ladder, um, uh, Brimbank actually, I think if I'm not mistaken, in pretty much most of the competitions are in in in, in the top three. Um, okay, we've only had two games so far. But um, yeah, they've either finished they're in top spot or in second spot, so they definitely look like they will be a Division One side right across the board. So um, you've used, got your usual suspects: Green Gully are up there, Western United are up there, um, North Geelong a little bit slow, but they're up there. They did very well last year. The sister club as well. Um, is do you do you think that this year's under fourteen competition? Um, obviously, still early days yet, but do you think it's 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 a lot tougher than it was last year? Look, to be honest, look, uh, this is my first year coaching in the West. So yep. and I've, I've had a look at, at the others. And usually it's been like the North or the East that's been pretty strong. But I, looking at it this year, I think the uh, West is probably going to be the division the to um, to uh, make the names and stuff like that. So it's, that's going to be the hardest group, I reckon, to actually get into Division 1. So if you do get into Division 1, you'll mm. probably be up there 
So there you go. Yep. Okay. Excellent, mate. That's that's awesome. Um, really, really um, great to hear some of the things that are happening off the field. Sonny, we wish you all the best. We wish the boys all the very best, starting with Thank the you. game on Sunday against George Cross. And uh, um, uh, we'll, we'll put that little fixture list up again. So just to confirm, under 14s are at 9.30, under, 16, uh, under 15s at 11.10 under 16s at 1, under 18s at 3. So if you are planning on coming down to Churchill Reserve this Sunday to take in either the under 23s or the senior game, turn up early. Turn up at 9.30 and watch the future uh, future uh, Dynamo champions um, as they're starting out. And, Sonny, uh, like I said, I wish you all the very best. And thank you for coming on Dynamo TV. Thank you, thank Such you for having notice. me. And look, just make sure you come down and support. Any any Dynamo fans, please come down. It's a, it's a big day. And, um, yeah, come watch your juniors and then come and watch your seniors. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Com completely agree with you there. Sonny, thank you very much for thank joining us. Thank you very us. much. Bye-bye. Sonny Pagoran, the under-14 boys junior NPL coach. Folks, don't go away. We'll be back very, very shortly. Episode episodes are, are, are passing by thick and fast. Well, the season kicked off last weekend, and one of the innovative um, things that we're going to be doing at Dinamore this year is we're going to have a Player of the Week award that is going to go to a senior player who has done exceptionally well. Well, uh, this inaugural award, the inaugural Player of uh, the Week award, goes to none other than our goalkeeper, what a, what, a, what a sensational effort um, that was, a sensational display. Yashko Keranovic, congratulations and, and, and well done on winning the first Dynamo of the Player of the Week award. Thank you. Uh, mate, mate, we're going to play a little bit of footage there. Um, this is kind of the closing stages of the game, and it was a tense period. Port Melbourne was peppering our goals, and uh, you pulled off some ripper saves. Take us through those last 10, 15 minutes from your from your end, Yashko. Um, yeah, it was a it was a game we expected because we had some unexpected uh, players pull out of the squad. Um, yeah, we knew what we were getting into with the game. Um, it was going to be a tough game, but the last ten minutes was just really hectic. We just tried to fight it out, and it was, uh, our resilience we always show in every game we play. Um, Everyone knows us from being a tough side. Um, we let them um, let you score past us that easily. Uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was hectic, but all the boys uh, managed to fight it out in the last 10, and, and we managed to get a draw, which we would be happy to take. It was definitely a point we would take for sure. Now, um, twilight kickoff, the sun was sort of setting low, and it was all sorts of, uh, I guess, positions there. Uh, was it difficult to view the ball in any way, or, or you had a pretty down pat most of the most of the afternoon? Um, first half it was fine. I managed to come out a few times for the ball, um, no issues with the sun. But second half there was two balls you could see that I probably should have come out for, uh, but the boys had a handle. Uh, they definitely the ball goes to the sun, and it's just a big uh, blurry vision, pretty much for me. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Now, if we, we can see the sun there and, and the poor commentators and uh, Steve Curtin, who did a great job there, uh, my colleague from the Football Out West show, he he, uh, <laughs> he had the sun directly in his eyes. But uh, um, if we kind of look at the um, statistics, uh, total shots, Port Melbourne had 19, Dynamo had five. Of those, eight were on target for Port Melbourne, only three on target for, for, for us. So really, it's a case of, um, Port Melbourne, well, they, they peppered our goals, but as you said, our defence seemed to stand tall and led by yourself as well. You seem, you, you did an incredible job, hence you won the player of the uh, the match award. But um, of those, let's say those 19 shots and eight shots on target, how many of you would, how many of those would you say actually really, really, you know, saw you, you know, your heart stop for a split second? Uh, first half, within maybe 10 to 15 minutes, um, 
there was a one on one, which I thought, oh, he's beat me here. But um, yeah, there was, everything was all pretty manageable other than that main ball. That, that, that kind of set the tone for the rest of the game. Um, usually uh, for a keeper, it's uh, getting comfortable, like catching your first ball or coming out for your first cross. Uh, for me, that was it. And once I had that under my belt, I, I just felt instantly comfortable and I knew that I was going to play well that game. And, uh, yeah, my confidence was higher. Oh, awesome. Now, um, all right, we're turning our attention now to a team that was, I guess, a young team, a new team. Nick Marinos did, did very well, I guess, at the end of the day. But now we come up against uh, the reigning champs, Avondale, at home this weekend. Um, it, obviously, it's going to be probably a completely different game. How are the boys preparing for this uh, going ahead? Is it similar to any other game or, or are you going to... Uh, you know, preparing a different type of a way against a different opponent. Um, yeah, no, we treat everyone like say there's no game the boys treat specifically. I think, I think our main goal is we all have our targets and a certain amount of points we want to acquire within the first. We set these goals uh, within a few weeks of the preseason when we're away on our trip uh, to be go. So. We, we know what, what we need to do uh, against Avondale. Definitely, we want to get the three points right home. It's a no brainer. Uh, we've played them before, all the boys had experience. We know, we know what we need to do. Yeah. So, um, mate, congratulations once again on winning the um, first uh, Dynamo Player of the Match Award. Um, hopefully, um, well, hopefully you won't be winning it again for the rest of the year, which will mean that the uh, boys at the other end of the field are doing all the job well. But uh, nonetheless, it's great to know that we've got such a reliable custodian between the sticks um, in Yashko Keranovic. Mate, all the very best for the rest of the season, and especially for Sunday's big uh, clash at home, our first home game of the season against the defending champions. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Good on you. Uh, Yashko Kedanovic, when we recorded that video just early, uh, moments earlier, it was uh, in the uh, uh, dinner more change room. So obviously it's like a fortress in there. Uh, the Wi-Fi connection is is not as good, but uh, nonetheless, I think you are able to uh, get pretty much the picture of what he had to say. Folks, we're going to be back very, very shortly after this break. And that pretty much wraps up episode five, tonight's episode of Dinamo TV. Before we go, we're just a quick recap of the games being played this Sunday at Churchill Reserve. As we said, all the action kicks off at 9.30 a.m. when Dinamo under-14s take on Caroline Springs George Cross in the under-15s, then uh, continue at 11.10 um, followed by the under 16s at one and the under 18s at three. All those games are on pitch three. The under 23s then um, take over at 12.30 on the main pitch and they'll be up against Avondale FC. And then it's the big game, the massive one. So please stay around, hang around all day at Churchill Reserve when St. Albans take on the reigning champions, Avondale FC, and uh, who this could be their last year in the NPL Victoria competition if the uh, National Second Division kicks off next year. And uh, wouldn't it be great if uh, Dinamo can, uh, well, can record a win on Sunday against the reigning champions. That game kicks off at 3 p.m. Before we go, folks, we're not going to do what uh, Robert Yarni, the now former um, Croatian under-17 coach, did. And we, as uh, Dinamo St. Albans, St. Albans Dinamo, we wish our namesake, uh, Dinamo Zagreb, all the very, very best for their UEFA Europa Conference League clash with Real Batiste. That's happening in the early hours of tomorrow morning. I think it's about 5 o'clock our time. Big game there for Dinamo Zagreb. So from one Dinamo to another, all the very, very best. Folks, next week we will have a very, very special guest ahead of uh, the big Croatian derby when we take on Dandenong City. That's Sunday week at Churchill Reserve when we host the big sponsors uh, luncheon. But un until then, make sure to get yourself you can get yourselves out to Churchill Reserve on Sunday for what should be a super Sunday of soccer. 
Um, from me, Tonchi Prusats, good night and thank you for being with us on Dinamo TV. Thank you.